Our topic today is using formulas. Our goal, I can solve for the missing values in known formulas. So today we're modeling with formulas. The process of solving equations is very important when it comes to using formulas. You should be able to rearrange any formula to solve for the value that you need. So we're going to start by just rearranging formulas as is, without any numbers in them at all. Uh, so looking at this first one, we're going to rearrange um, this formula, solve p equals 2l plus 2w for the variable w. Uh, I hope you can recognize this as the perimeter um, for uh, any rectangle. And we want to get w by itself. So we've got p equals 2l plus 2w. The first thing we want to do is get rid of this because it's uh, on that side of the equation. I want to get the 2w completely by itself first. So I'm going to get rid of this 2l. So I get rid of the 2l by subtracting 2l on both sides of the equation. So now I'm going to have p subtract 2l equals 2w. Now that I've got the 2w completely by itself on this side of the equation, I want to get the w completely by itself. And as you can see, this 2 is multiplying the w. So to get rid of something that's multiplying, we divide. And of course, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So this side is now just plain w. And on this side, we have p subtract 2l divided by 2. And now if I knew uh, what the perimeter was and what the length was, I could figure out what w was by solving into this formula. The next one we're going to look at, solve i equals prt for the variable t. Well, this formula, i equals prt, is actually for finding interest if you know the principal, the rate, and the time for a, val for a loan. Um, so if we want to know time, but we're given interest, principal, and rate, we need to be able to solve for that. So I'm going to isolate this for t. Now notice t, this is one big multiplication on this side of the equation. So t is being multiplied by the p and the r. So if I want to get p by t by itself, I divide by both the p and the r. But of course, if I do that on that side, I have to do it on this side as well. So this side is just plain old t now, and on this side I have i divided by p r. Maybe that make that look a little bit more like an i in these spots instead of a 1. Uh, next question, or next formula I should say, uh, s equals w minus 10e over t. This is actually the formula for finding your typing speed. This is the number of words you type minus 10 times the number of errors uh, divided by the time it takes. So if we want to solve for E, this one's a little bit trickier because we've already got that division in there. So I'm going to write this down again here where we can manipulate it. And the first thing I want to do is get the T off of this side. Now to get the T off of that side, I'm going to multiply by t, because it's dividing that side. And of course, if I multiply by t on that side, I need to multiply by the t on this side as well. So this side is s times t, and it doesn't matter which order you write them in. Over on this side, those two t's cancelled, because basically division, t divided by t is 1. And so we have w minus 10e on that side. Next, I need to get this 10 e by itself. So I'm going to get rid of the w. I'm going to subtract w on both sides. And now this side is s times t subtract w equals negative 10 e. Now lastly, I want to get this e completely by itself. So in order to do that, I have to divide by negative 10. And if I divide by negative 10 on that side, I divide by negative 10 on this side as well. So this side becomes uh, s t minus w over negative 10. And that is going to equal e on that side of the equation.
Now I don't really like that negative 10 on the bottom, so we can just fix it just a little bit by multiplying top and bottom of this thing by negative 1. If I multiply top and bottom of this by negative 1, I get minus st plus w over positive 10. And then usually we don't like this negative hanging around out front, because when we have a negative hanging around out front, that uh, tends to get lost. So if I just swap these two things around so that that says w, minus st over 10 equals e, then that's a much more acceptable equation. Moving on to the next slide, um, example two, plug the values in and then solve for an unknown. So we don't have to rearrange the equation first. We can actually plug stuff in and then rearrange for what's left. Uh, so in this particular example, it says a stage in the shape of a semicircle is shown below. Use the given formula to determine the radius for a stage that is 200 square meters. So what we're given here is the area. And here's the formula that we have. Area of a semicircle equals pi r squared divided by 2. So I know the area is 200, so I'm going to put 200 in where the a is. And then pi, I know what that is, that's not a variable, that's 3.14159. So we're going to have r squared divided by 2. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of this divide by 2. To get rid of a divide by 2, I times by 2, and of course whatever I do to one side, I do the same thing to the other side. So this becomes 400 equals, and these twos are gone, so it's just pi r squared. Now I need to get rid of this pi. That pi is multiplying the r squared, so to get rid of it, I have to divide by pi. So I divide by pi on both sides of the equation, and I'm now left with r squared on this side, and 400 divided by pi on that side. I'm not going to actually divide 400 by pi until the very last step. Um, and how I get rid of a squared in an equation is to take a square root. So if I take the square root of that side, I'm left with just an r. But whatever I do to one side, I do the same thing to the other, and I take the square root of that side as well. And if I take the square root of that side, Uh, I have approximately 11.3. And that's going to be in meters since our area was given in square meters. So therefore, the radius is 11.3 meters. Moving right along, let's take a look at this one. Rearrange the formula first, then plug in the values. If speed, e if distance equals speed times time, d equals st, then how long will it take to go 655 kilometers, driving 90 kilometers an hour? So the question told us to rearrange this equation first. Now let's have a look at what we've got here. 655 kilometers is a distance, so I've got a d, and 90 kilometers an hour is an is a speed, so that's an S. So I need to get T by itself. If I'm getting T by itself, I have to get rid of that S, so I need to divide both sides by S. And now my equation is T equals D over S. And now I can plug these numbers in. I've got a D and I've got an S, so I need to do 655 divided by 90 equals T. And 655 divided by 90 is approximately 7.3 hours. So T is approximately 7.3 hours. Uh, so therefore, it will take 7.3 hours to travel. 655 kilometers if you're going the speed limit at 90 kilometers an hour. Now the last one here is for um, temperature. The formula for converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit 
is f equals 9 fifths c plus 32. Rearrange for c to find the formula for going from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Uh, and then the next part gives us some information to solve for. So let's rearrange the formula first. It wants us to get C by itself. So Fahrenheit equals 9 fifths Celsius plus 32. So the easiest thing to get rid of here, we want to get the C term by itself first. So I'm going to subtract the 32 and I need to do that on both sides. So I subtract 32 on both sides and what that gives me is F minus 32 equals 9 fifths C. Now I'm going to get rid of this 5. This whole thing here is being divided by 5 so to get rid of that 5 I can multiply both sides by 5 so I'm going to multiply this side by 5 and that gives me 5 uh, times, and I'm going to leave it in brackets, F minus 32 equals 9C. And lastly, to get C by itself, I'm going to divide both of these things by 9. So that gives me the equation 5 times the Fahrenheit temperature minus 32 divided by 9 equals C. Now let's look at the next part of the question. It says the temperature in Florida over the March break was about 78 degrees Fahrenheit. How hot is this in Celsius? Well we've got that new formula we, we rearranged for. So I know that Celsius equals 5 times Fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 9 so we need to just stick in this 78 degrees, which is our Fahrenheit temperature, in for F. So 5 times 78 minus 32 divided by 9. Practicing our order of operations, we know we have to do this 78 minus 32, so that's going to be 46 divided by 9. And then all in one go, you can do 5 times 46 divided by 9. And we get 25.5, or approximately 26 degrees Celsius. So therefore, it was about 26 degrees Celsius. And that concludes the lesson for today.